Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is the greatest Star Wars game ever made. As a matter of fact, I would argue it is even better than the movies, which is a bold claim considering how fantastic that Ewoks movie turned out to be. Do, do you guys have anything to eat? Food. Eat, eat. KOTOR is in fact so good that it is the only game that I will replay every single year. And with Star Wars The Last Jedi just hitting theaters, I figured this was the perfect opportunity to talk about the best storylines from the game. So here are the five best side quests in KOTOR. Whatever you may think of Tusken Raiders... I hate them! Uh, yeah, well, whatever your opinion is of them... They're like animals, and I slaughtered them like animals. Shut up, Anakin! Anyway, one thing is for sure about these sand people. They are portrayed as a violent and animalistic group of creatures. They destroy our sand crawlers and kill our miners. It's as if their chieftain has decided to wage war against us. But the truth is, they're really just like you and me. And nothing proves that better than the sand people quest. After landing on Tatooine, we learn that the sand people have been attacking anyone who dares leave the town of Inkerhead. And Zerka Corporation are looking for someone to wipe these guys out for good. And while just knocking them off is probably the easiest option, there is actually a much more peaceful alternative. If you purchase the Protocol Droid HK-47, which I would recommend acquiring regardless, then you will be able to communicate directly with these sand people. Alright HK, what do we need to do to get these sand guys to stop attacking civilians? We must make a contribution to his people that shows we are not a threat. Shall I blast him now, master? Um, I think I'm gonna have you hold off on that for now. If you do offer a sign of goodwill, then the sand people will stop their attacks and eventually move out of the area. And problem solved. But then again, you could just kill them all. You know, whatever you feel comfortable with. I killed them. I killed them all. When you think of the best quest in a game, you usually don't think of literally the first quest in the game. But honestly, the opening mission in KOTOR is just fantastic. And thank god it is, because when I first purchased this game, my computer wasn't actually capable of running the game properly, and I was only able to play the first mission before the whole thing would crash. And if that mission had been bad, well let's just say I wouldn't be making this list today. The game begins with our character waking up to discover that the starship they are on is being blown to bits by Sith starfighters. How we were sleeping through this battle in the first place, I'm not really sure. But you have to start the game somehow. The Endar Spire is under attack. Hurry up, we don't have much time. For some reason, my only options to reply are, who are you and the Endar Spire. I guess we'll go with the second one. Did you fall out of your bunk and hit your head? The Endar Spire is the ship we're stationed on. This ship. You probably don't even know who I am, do you? Yeah, that seems like an appropriate response. After that strange conversation, Trask here joins our party and we storm through the starship fighting for our lives and avoiding Sith warriors. Quite frankly, this quest is everything you could ever want from the start of a video game. It's action-packed, straightforward, and doesn't waste your time. And I would argue that no beginning of a game has ever been this good. And that argument is not disputable. This next quest may not be very action-packed, mostly because there's zero action, but that doesn't mean it's not good, because it is. It starts when you come across the Jedi Baluk? I'm not really sure. Anyway, this guy tells us he's investigating a murder, and that he wants our help. We are then magically teleported to the scene of the crime, with two suspicious-looking guys, Rickard and Handon, standing around a dead body. I was out hunting Eria south of here, and I saw one over by the bridge. I shot, and when I came over here, I found Handon standing over the body, holding his side. There wasn't an eerie as in sight. I think he might have taken it. Look, Rickard, I'm no expert, but that definitely sounds like you killed him. As suspicious as Rickard's story sounds, if we do a bit more digging, we eventually discover that the dead guy had been sleeping with Handon's wife for weeks, and Handon only just found out two days ago. Now that's a motive, if I've ever heard one. Also, it turns out that the bloody rifle that was next to the dead guy had actually been Handon's rifle. It looks like we've uncovered the truth. Handon was the real killer and tried to blame Rickard thinking he could get away with it. Well, you can't fool me, no sir. What? No! You don't know what you've done! Wait, what are you talking about, Handon? I came out here, I admit, to kill Calder, but so did Rickard. He must have thought it was Calder when he shot and hit me. Wow, he must have been a real charmer. 
You know, this quest really proves that you don't need to kill something every two seconds in order to have a good time. Sometimes stopping to solve a good crime mystery can be in many ways even better. Don't be absurd. Shut up, Bastila. Have you ever had one of those times where someone hands you a strange box and tells you definitely do not open this box for any reason whatsoever? Well, the quest Unfinished Business is, well, it's exactly that situation. After delivering some spice to a Rodian named Lurz, he'll hand us a rather mysterious box. And, well, he tells us not to open it. Now, if you choose to just deliver the box and not open it, then you'll receive a hefty sum of credits and be none the wiser. But honestly, I'm really curious what's inside this thing. Alright, let's open it. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Huh. Well, this seems bad. Where am I? This is the construct. As it turns out, the mysterious box is actually an ancient prison, designed to hold the mind of the most dangerous criminals in the galaxy. What makes this guy dangerous? I don't really know. I mean, he's not even that good at math. Oh, also, he wants to take over our bodies so he can leave this prison and wreak havoc once more. So, I guess that's pretty bad. Fortunately, he is incapable of taking over our body without our permission. The only problem is, we are incapable of leaving this prison without his knowledge. So, we're at a bit of an impasse. But there is a solution. Riddles. I mean, honestly, what else could it have been? Conveniently, however, this guy isn't very good at them either. Also, we can answer in the style of a multiple choice quiz, so recognizing the correct answer isn't really that difficult. After answering some of the easiest riddles known to man, we finally beat him using his greatest weakness. Math. Not even tough math, too. What's wrong with this guy? Finally, we can be free of this horrible place. Sucks to be you, weird eyeball guy. I'm out of here. Well, I'm definitely not going in there again. This last quest is really more of a quest line, but I'm gonna rope it all into one because honestly, the whole thing is just fantastic. And the quest I'm talking about is the Geno Haradin, an elite and extremely secret group of bounty hunters and assassins known as the Geno Haradin have contacted us in secret with an opportunity to join their prestigious gang. And how could I say no? After meeting with a guy named Hewless, we're told that before we can officially join, we have to prove ourselves worthy. Which, as you can probably imagine, involves some assassinating. For the most part, the assassinations are pretty straightforward. But that doesn't mean they aren't awesome. Like this one where you track a Gamoran into the Dune Sea of Tatooine, then plan an explosive on a speeder bike, and then hide behind another speeder bike to wait for the Gamorian to return. Or at least, attempt to hide. Honestly, I'm not that shocked he found us. But craziest of all was this Wookiee hanging out on Kashyyyk. And despite me having played this game for years, I always just figured this guy was just a regular Wookiee. But this guy is no ordinary furball. He's actually a shapeshifter. And not the crappy Attack of the Clones kind of shapeshifter either. No, this guy can turn into literally anything. I don't know how he does it, but it's pretty impressive. Alright, we've eliminated all of our targets, now it's time to officially join the guild. I'm excited. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, Hewless tricked us! As it turns out, Hewless was just using us to take out the leaders of the Geno Haradin, so that way he could lead the guild completely unopposed. And worst of all, he won't even let us join anymore. What a jerk! The only way to solve this problem is through an honorable duel one-on-one. -on -one. Just Hewless and me. Alright, I'm here to kill you. Hmm. I suppose I should have seen this coming. <laughs> well, those were the best side quests in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. But there are plenty more awesome quests in this game, including the main storyline that I didn't even touch on. So if you haven't played this game before, I would definitely recommend checking it out. But in the meantime, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, I will be doing a Let's Play of the Geno Haradin questline on Tuesday if you are interested. Which, you should be. It's a pretty fantastic quest. So see you then. Goodbye. You tentacle-headed moron!